Today, I'm bringing you the top 10 tips for new players inside of Call of Dragons. Whether you're a brand new player to the game, a light spender, a mid spender, or a whale inside of Call of Dragons, there are tips inside of this video that you can find beneficial that'll help you on your journey inside of this kingdom builder. If at any point in time you find this valuable, have learned something, or just enjoy your time inside of the video, consider subscribing to the channel because I'm putting out videos and live streams every single day for Call of Dragons. Now, I'm assuming that you've already learned that League of Order is probably the number one faction that you should start out with. It's gonna give you the best hero for starting, and this is probably the best starting point, and you could always change this later on inside of the game. So let's progress on from there. Remember, Call of Dragons is not just a farming and build your base game. This is a game about war, and to be inside of war, you want the strongest troops possible. So to do this, you're gonna wanna get your Hall of Order up as quickly as you can so that you can unlock tier three troops. This is the first level of troops that's really gonna be beneficial to you so that you can progress and actually be relevant inside of these battles. Tier three troops are going to be unlocked at City Hall or Hall of Order level 16. At that point in time, you'll be able to do the research as you upgrade your laboratory to the level where you can unlock and train tier three troops. As you can see in the College of Order, I've unlocked tier two, we've unlocked tier three, and we are currently unlocking our tier four troops. This is the progression that you're going to want to do as well. But remember, you have to do all of the research required to get there. It's not just as easy as upgrading your Hall of Order. The next tip is to explore the fog on the map. Inside of this fog, you're going to not only explore and find new lands, but you're going to find rewards that you can use to further progress your account. As you can see right here, I have over 99 plus rewards for myself to gain. And all I have to do are go visit these stations or these spots that have been discovered, and I can claim the rewards, including troops, resources, speed ups, or really anything that you could find inside of the game, even the premium currency, which are gems inside of Call of Dragons. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you join an alliance. As I mentioned, this is a war game and inside of this game, you can be attacked and when attacked, you could lose a lot of the resources and progression that you've made. So you're gonna to wanna to try to find an alliance that can protect you, that you could protect with and that really makes you feel like part of a family. Because if you're out there solo inside of Call of Dragons, like many other kingdom builders, you're gonna have a rough time at the game. It's gonna be difficult and you're probably not going to have fun. Now, the better alliances will be alliances that have money being spent. And for doing that, you get a ton of rewards. I get approximately 200 rewards per day as people buy in-game items inside of the game. You can do the same if you're in an alliance that spends as much. If you're not getting any rewards, it's probably a completely free-to-play alliance which then will net you less rewards. So you're gonna to wanna to try and get in with an alliance that's extremely active for both the rewards and for the helps, which we're about to get to. Now, before you go ask for any helps, we're gonna take a step back and you're gonna to wanna to be looking for runes on the map to help you with giving yourself some buffs when you're trying to do some upgrades, some research, or even some gathering. For example, these mana stones, or as I called them runes, they're actually called mana stones, will help you in various different ways. As you can see, this one right here is a mana stone of haste. It's gonna give me a lesion march speed of 7%. This means my troops will march 7% faster. For right now, that doesn't benefit me, but this one does a build speed of plus 7%. It means that it's gonna take less time for my structures to build. So what I wanna do is I wanna send out a gatherer to come on over here, pick up this rune so I can get that buff before I do any building. So after that rune is collected, I'll decide to upgrade something inside of my city. But after you upgrade one of your structures, you're gonna wanna ask for helps. Helps all take place in the Alliance Center, which is a structure that I feel is very important to upgrade. Reason being, as you upgrade this to the next level, you're able to get more helps. Helps can shave off hours from your upgrades, which will then cost you less and have you using less resources, also speed ups to upgrade these structures. So make sure you use helps. Let me take you there right now because inside of your Alliance, you have your help center and check this out. I've had 25 of 25 helps and it has saved me one hour on this structure, two or three hours on this one and three and a half hours on this one. So as you could see, 
helps are a great way for you to save on speed ups, which are not the most abundant things inside of the game. They could take a while for you to get or a lot of money for you to purchase. So make sure you get your helps in, make sure your Alliance Center is up and make sure you're utilizing a rune to shorten the upgrade time even further. A lot of times before you upgrade one thing in your city, it requires you to upgrade something else. One of those things are your resource centers, but it's worth noting, you don't need to upgrade all of them. For example, if I want to upgrade my hospital to the next level, it's going to require that I upgrade my foundry to the level above that. So if I wanted to get to 21 in my hospital, I would have needed to get to my foundry 21. That only means I need to upgrade one of those resource stations, not all three of my foundries. So I always try to keep one of each of my resource stations, the foundry, the mint, the lumber mill, and the mana factory or mana refinery up to the highest level or pretty close to it. The other ones I'll let lag behind. I do the same for my hospitals. I'm gonna have one max level hospital because it's a requirement to move up to the next Hall of Order level, but the other ones, I don't really push them, at least not yet. Now, the more hospitals you have, the more levels that they have, the more capacity you have. So it is advantageous for you to get them up. But if you're trying to push that level, as we mentioned earlier, so you can get those tier three and tier four troops, you don't have time to upgrade anything or everything as quickly as possible. So you have to pick and choose. And this is just a quicker way to progress to that at least in my opinion. Now, if you're a free to play player inside of the game, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the most out of every single event going on. So right now, strong foundations. This is building power. As I have buildings that are upgraded, I get more building power and I get rewards for doing so. As you can see, I've already claimed 4,500 points for building power and I got rewards for that. You're gonna wanna try and get as much of your progression done during these events. Make sure that if you use your speed ups, you're getting rewarded for using speed ups. If you're getting building power, you're getting rewards for doing it. You have to be smart when how you do this. Another example is the strongest Lord, which is now going on inside of our server. Here on day one, training legions, troop training gives you rewards. This is a great day to do speed ups on your troop training. Day two, right now, what we have going on is dark patrols. Going after the dark patrols or dark creatures is gonna give me rewards for doing so. I'm gonna wanna do this. This is what I'm gonna focus on today. The following day, we have gathering resources. I'm gonna wanna make this as a big gathering day for me. Cause not only do you get the rewards here, but you get jumped up in the rankings and when you get high rankings, which believe me, you have to be up there to get good rewards, but it's possible. Some legendary heroes only come on the wheel. Kanara is one, for example. Now you'll get a free spin per day, and I got my free spin, and I actually got one of her tokens, but you are really gonna wanna try to, if you can, unlock, at least unlock this hero, or any of the heroes that are on the wheel, because sometimes when the wheel goes away, your opportunity to get that hero unlocked also goes away as well, and sometimes it doesn't ever come back. So at least unlocking the hero gives you the ability to utilize them in some fashion in the future. Now let's speak more about heroes. Just because some heroes are blue or the lowest tier of heroes doesn't mean that they're not really valuable and can't do a lot of great things inside of the game. Chalk right here, for example, is one of my best gatherers. I absolutely love him. He's less expensive to upgrade and to star up and I can get his skills all the way to max level so that we can get the most out of this hero. While as with a legendary hero, this can be something that's a lot more difficult. It takes a lot more dust, it takes a lot more experience books, it takes a lot more stars to get him up there, and just unlocking the tokens to get the skills can be much more difficult. So really utilizing some of the heroes that are not legendaries can be valuable. Now we spoke about the League of Order, which is the probably best one to start with, the best faction to start with, and that's because you get Wildir. Wildir is a great hero, and when you start out as this faction, you get a lot of tokens for Wildir in turn, allowing you to upgrade him more quickly. Now, the reason that I have all four of his skills unlocked are because I know it's pretty easy for me to get him maxed out. I'm gonna go five, 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 five on all of the skills. Now, it's worth noting that a lot of people will not want to unlock a skill until the prior skill has been max leveled. So right here, I don't have the third skill max leveled yet, and I did unlock that fourth skill. For me, with him, I knew I was gonna get a bunch of his tokens, and it wasn't really a big deal for me whatsoever. But if you're talking about a legendary hero, 
it's much more likely that you're gonna wanna go and max out that first skill before you go ahead and unlock any of the other ones because typically the first skill is the strongest. If you have questions about that, I just put out a video on how to 5111 a hero. If you have no idea what that means, go check out that video so that you can kind of learn about it and know how to get the most out of legendary heroes if you don't have any funding, if you're gonna be free to play or really a light spender as well. Now you'll notice on my heroes, they're holding or they have artifacts attached to them. Notice where I'm circling right here. Everyone has an artifact and that's what makes this game so fun or one of the things at least. Artifacts are things that you can do to enhance the builds of your characters. They do all different things. So for example, the tier of Arben, this is a healing artifact. I absolutely love it and I use it all of the time. What this does is once your rage is up to a certain level, you can heal your party and parties around you utilizing this artifact. Then there's a cooldown and then it's over and then you'll have to wait for that again. We have the poison bomb, which is another one I really like. This is an epic. Uh, artifact and this just drops a time bomb on your opponents and drops a ton of damage on them again having a cooldown but not everything is for battle we have this one right here which is one of my favorites this is the quick gather you literally can go to a, a gathering station hit the button and it will gather depending on how high you level them up 200,000 wood 150,000 or 80,000 mana and it does it in an instant, then it will continue collecting. But this is a really nice way to get resources extremely quickly. And as I mentioned, the more you upgrade them, the more quickly you can do them or the more powerful they are, or the more resources in this case you can gain. Now, how do you upgrade them? Well, first of all, these skills right here can be upgraded and you can upgrade them once you get more of the emblems required. So once you get more of these unlocked, you can use them to upgrade. But that's not the only way because you can also come on here and you could use Arcane Dust to upgrade them to the next level. And for an example right here, I'll get this up to a level 30, which will further enhance my abilities. Plus you get hero power as well while you're doing this. So artifacts, not only are they super effective inside of the game, but they are really super, super fun. Now, something worth noting is you're going to always want to have your research going. You don't want to have it just sitting stagnant because you can't progress while your research, well, is not progressing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on over here, get something going, and as always, ask for Alliance help, which will further speed up these actions. And just like your research, always make sure you're training troops. Notice all of my troops are being trained right here. Now, let me give you an example of something. I've recently upgraded my Vestals, or my little wizards, you can call them, to tier four. What's worth doing, in my opinion, as you progress through tier one, tier two, tier three, into tier four, just keep training your troops. But once you hit tier four, I think it's a good idea to upgrade all of your tier ones, twos, and threes to then tier four troops. This is when the battles get really realistic and awesome inside of the game once you hit tier four t5 is kind of end game which can take a really long time to get to so let me show you an example of how we upgrade troops rather than training troops. so while i'm here it's time for me to train i can choose to either upgrade a troop or train a new troop so if i want to train a new vessel it's going to take 14 and 15 hours about and that amount of resources but if i want to go with a tier three and upgrade it with this up button right here to tier four, it's gonna cost less and it's gonna take less time. This one's gonna take three hours and 42 minutes. So during the daytime, when I'm active and able to be on the game a lot, what I'll do is I'll do this and every few hours, I'll make sure that I'm collecting them and upgrading new ones, but it's the nighttime right now. What I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna be going to bed soon, is upgrading tier ones or training new tier fours if I don't have tier ones to twos. So right here, if I wanna do this upgrade, this right here is going to take quite a bit longer. It's gonna take 12 hours because it's not tier three going to four, it's tier one going to tier four. It's gonna be more expensive, it's gonna take more time. We are gonna promote them and then when I wake up in the morning or a little bit afterwards because this is 12 hours and unfortunately I don't get that much sleep, we're gonna have more Vestals that have been upgraded to tier four. Next, we have VIP or honorary membership as it's called here in Call of Dragons. This is very important as well, and this can take a little while to grind to, but you really wanna get to level nine. In doing this, you unlock every single day all of these rewards. 
One of these rewards being a legendary hero token, which means every single day right now, I'm getting a Velen token, which is gonna allow me to max out my legendary commander in some time. It's not gonna take me that long. Before this, tier eight, you're then getting two epics, but you're not getting any legendaries. And before that, you're getting two epics at level six and only one at level five. So what you're really trying to get yourself to is that free legendary every single day, because this will allow you in time to have a max level legendary commander or hero and just really be able to be a bit more potent on the battlefield. Dragon Trail is like the campaign inside of the game. This is something you're gonna wanna grind through as you can. I'm at level 65 and to be very honest with you guys, I don't grind it as hard as I should. It goes to level 80 max and you get passive loot. As you progress through different levels, you gain loot per hour. As you can see, I'll get hero experience 135 per hour, dragon glass 45 per hour, and prestige 450 per hour if I beat level 65. Here are my passive rewards that I'm claiming, and every single day, you get rewards that you can grab here from the quick loot. So you progressing this as much as you can is gonna get you the resources that you need to upgrade your heroes and to upgrade something else, which we haven't even touched on yet. Keep in mind, there are season resets in Call of Dragons. I put out a full video on season resets, what they look like, what gets reset inside of season reset, and this is a good thing, keeping the playing field between free-to-play players and whales a lot tighter than if it was no reset in place. That said, Dragon Trail it gets reset. You'll have to redo it every season, which is every 70 days. And policies are what you can utilize. The things that you get from Dragon Trail right here, your prestige on. You use your prestige tokens to upgrade this talent tree. Now, there's different types of healing inside of the game. We didn't really get much into that inside of this video, but I'm going with the free healing. It just allows you to Heal your troops for free. They will not die. You heal them for free. It just takes some time and it doesn't cost you any resources. There's many ways to upgrade this along the way, but this is what you use those two tokens for. Now, like the Dragon Trail, the policies will be reset every season and no, this is not your research. Your research does not get reset, but your policies do. With that being said, notice you can spend gems to finish the training right here resource gathering is being upgraded in this talent tree or this policy tree i could use gems which are real premium currency inside of the game to make this happen right now but i will never do this because the policies get reset why would i want to spend gems on something that's going to be reset at the end of the season and those gems will evaporate into the air I don't want to do that unless it was something that was drastic that I needed for a war or something like that. Besides that, I'm going to keep my gems in my pocket and not spend them on policies. Your Augur Stone is a spot for information and a spot for awards. As you can see right here, as you go into the Augur Stone, you have different events that happen throughout your season inside of the game. These events will be reset as seasons go as well. And there's pretty hefty rewards that you can get for completing these. And as you can see, you complete them as time goes on. There's actually one that I missed here and it was an easy one as well. I'm still am kicking myself for not getting it, but tons of rewards to be had. But there's also all of your information on seasons is down here, things that are changed and things that you lose, the rewards that you get for the end of the season as well. This is a good information hub for you if you're wondering what goes on with seasons and what kind of rewards you can get every single day. And this game has a deep, in-depth story. Again, something that I'm kind of neglecting. You can go through the story and you get rewarded for doing that. So for example, right here, I have to attack these troops right here, this lizard. Now let's see if I have a legion that can go over there. It's a guaranteed win. It's only gonna take me a little bit. You know what I could probably do? Vestals are slower than swordsmen. If I go over there with all of my swordsmen, it's gonna take me less time. It's gonna take me one minute. I'm gonna complete this and we're gonna get rewards for doing it just for progressing through the story. Now there will be dialogue that you're gonna probably have to mega click through so you can get through it really quickly. But with that being said, the rewards are fruitful. They're big and they help you progress. Again, really good for free to play players or low spenders. So here we are engaging in the battle. Now keep in mind, we're fighting this lizard. I brought weak troops just because I wanted to get there more quickly. So as we get this done, we're gonna get the rewards because that's what I really wanted to showcase right here. Now with that being said, I'm being attacked by some darklings. So I'm gonna utilize my artifact right here to heal myself as I was talking to you guys about earlier in the video. 
and then we're gonna make sure that we get out of here because these guys are gonna take us down. They are much stronger than us, and since I didn't bring my stronger troops, we, uh, we would have lost that battle, but I did progress. So when we come on over here and back, we can claim the rewards. 18,000 gold, wood, 14,000 of the stone, and a bunch of training speed ups as well. You could go through, claim all of these, and then as I mentioned, you can either sit here, read all the dialogue, and really learn about the story, or do what I do and get a nice rhythmic click pattern going, get through the story quickly so you can get onto the new events so that you can get more rewards. Make sure you complete your daily tasks. These are extremely important. Your daily tasks, as I've already completed what I needed to, they will open up this chest. Inside of this chest, you will get your hero tokens. Whatever faction you start with, you'll get tokens for that hero. As you can see from me, I get myself two wild deer tokens every day just from completing these. Literally takes me five minutes just doing things that I normally do inside of the game to get this. And I'm gonna basically guarantee myself a strong epic hero that'll be max level before you know it, just because I'm doing things that you normally do inside of the game. So don't neglect this. Even if you don't wanna play for the day, log in for five minutes, do the few things that you need to do so you can get those rewards. And now we all love having a really good looking city, organized and strong. But unlike some other games where base building is actually important, your base here is all for cosmetics. It's not gonna help protect your base in any way. Make it in a way that you are that you like hanging out with it, that you like seeing it, or organize it in a way for you so that when you go there, you know where everything is, how to get it quickly, and how to be efficient inside of the game. Now, I have a redesign plan because I like things to look nice inside of the game. I think we're looking okay right now, but we could look better. Notice that my scouts, they're just sitting here. They're all camping. What I'm gonna wanna do once I find that they're camping is I'm gonna wanna zoom out, find some fog and get them looking at, get, just get into the fog again because that's where you're gonna find the rewards that are hidden within. And this is a big map. You really need to make sure that you can unlock all of this fog so you can see everything going on. So when it's battle time, you can see what's up. And of course you wanna unlock level 20 for your heroes. When you unlock level 20, you can then pair that that hero with another hero to go out in battle. They don't have to go out solo anymore. You get more power, you get more effects when you're going out there. So try to get your heroes up to level 20 quickly so you can be more efficient when you're in battle. And also notice that none of my heroes are below level 10. That's because when you're trying to gain power more quickly, and I put a full video on how to gain power fast for free, check that one out if you haven't seen it already, you can easily go after Darklings with your head hero, as your number one and back him up with a level one hero, which was Kanara just a little bit ago, and go after one or two Darklings, they will instantly level up to level 10. You'll get the power that you need for any events that are going on inside of the game, and you'll have a hero, well, that's not level one. And if you're in a solid alliance, one that has good communication and one that's really on top of the game the way you're supposed to, zoom out on your map and you're gonna be looking for markers they'll tell you what's going on at what time and really guide you through the game so you know what to do every single day because there's so many things to do you can get lost there's a lot of depth here inside of the game so you can leave markers around the map and it's going to really help you know what you're doing and plan out your day around the times that things are happening and it's just a great way to be in the know as well as check your mail you want to make sure that you use your CP every single day. And you're probably saying, Echo, what is CP? Well, if you take a look at the top left, you have your icon. There's that green bar around your icon. That green bar is your CP level. When you click on yourself, you'll notice that this is your CP. It's essentially your energy to go and do actions inside of the game to like attack Darklings. So let's get an example right here. I have one of my uh, heroes right outside. I just made them go home. Well, we're gonna get an even better example now because now it's gonna cost more. If I wanna attack these Darklings right here, I'll go, I'll choose my, my march, they'll go on out. It's gonna cost 50 of that CP to do it. Now, if I leave my troops out here in the wild, each attack, it'll cost less than less, down to 40 CP, which can even possibly be better than that over time. Now, if you leave this, 
and your bar is green and you go to bed, you basically wasted opportunities to gain more resources because essentially attacking Darklings is another way of farming inside of the game. You also use this CP by joining rallies or doing other battle related actions. So make sure you use all of it because it's going to replenish itself. And my next tip is for gathering. Obviously, you want to use the proper heroes, your gathering heroes that have had the gathering tree enhanced to give you better gathering. But you also want to look around, scroll out and look at the different stations. Notice we have a level three right here of ore. Someone's gathering from there. A level two of wood, a level one of wood. You want to go to the stations that one, have resources that you are strong enough to collect. If you can only collect 90,000 of the resource and there's 120,000 there, it's kind of bad etiquette to gather that and then just to leave it with a little bit left. Always try and go clean up. But if you're a big gatherer, you're gonna wanna gather from the largest stations you can so you can get as much resources as possible. But you wanna make sure that you gather within your territory. As you can see, this blue territory is all my territory or my alliance's territory. And from gathering inside of here, it's gonna give you one faster gathering and it's gonna benefit the Alliance as a whole. On top of that, there are resource stations that will be created by your Alliance, assuming you're in a halfway decent Alliance. This is, for example, our Mana Well, where we could have tons of gatherers from our Alliance at, notice we have 56 gatherers. I'm going to send my best gatherers, which is with as many troops as I possibly can to gather from the station. They will sit there for hours and hours and come back with tons of resources. This is a great way to get you to get resources quickly. So make sure you gather from your Alliance resource stations, as I call them, and make sure you gather on your own territory. And the last thing you should ever do is gather on another Alliance's territory. If you do that, you're going to be attacked your troops are going to die and you're gonna wake up sad. Now there's a good chance that I forgot a tip or two. So the best thing that you could do, the best tip of all from today's video is to subscribe to the channel. Because anytime I learn something inside of the game or I do something that's really cool inside of the game or anytime that an event happens inside of the game that I think you guys would enjoy, you're gonna have me putting out a video on that topic or even live streaming these big events. So whenever there's something that you could learn that'll benefit you as a player, I'm gonna have you covered I'm putting out two, three videos per day on the channel. I know, I'm obsessed. It's because I'm in love with Call of Dragons. So subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video.